What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Today's video is hopefully gonna be shorter than most of my videos. I recently got a Jack Appear battery. The model number for it is the JK48V100. I'm pretty sure it's the older model, but that's okay. The point of this video is I hear there's a lot of problems connecting this battery to inverters and getting the BMS and all that kind of stuff to communicate. Basically what I'm gonna do today is hook this battery up to my inverter. And if I'm successful, hopefully you guys can do it too. My inverter is a 12,000 watt, grow watt, low frequency split phase inverter. I'll show you here in just a few minutes. And also keep in mind, we're not gonna be doing a full review on this battery quite yet. That'll be probably the next video or two. We're just gonna be hooking it up to the inverter and making sure we can get it to work. All right, let's get to it. All right, so here is the Jacoper battery. The batteries inside are lithium iron phosphate. Model number is JK48V100. The inverter that I have is the GrowWatt 12,000 watt split phase low frequency inverter. Model number for mine is the SPF 12,000T DVM MPV. I guess what we'll do real quick is turn it on by the power button down here in the lower right corner and flipping on the circuit breaker, which I don't know if we technically need. Yeah. All right, so anyway. Uh, what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna take off these guys and we're gonna connect this up to the inverter. So let me hook up some cables to this real quick. And I'm just gonna be using an Anderson connector. That's just cause I have these laying around and that's what's connected to my inverter at the moment. So these bolts right here are a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and shut that off. Put the little covers back on and that's pretty much it. We are going to connect the ethernet cable that was supplied and we're gonna go right to the RS485A port right here. And also while we're down here, these dip switches, the furthest one on the left is number one. We're gonna change that to up or on, just like that. And then I will connect the battery to the inverter. And then we're gonna connect the other end of the ethernet cable to the inverter. All right, so on the bottom of the inverter, you can see BMS and RS485. We're gonna connect to the BMS right here. So right there. Over here on the inverter, sorry for all this reflection. There's not much I can do about that. So anyway, besides the reflection, what we're gonna do here is turn on the inverter, you know, wait a couple seconds for it to boot up. And then we're gonna head over here to this little menu. And we're gonna be pushing all the little buttons down here to go inside the menu and change some of the settings. So we're gonna long press the enter button right over here on the right. Once that changes, we're gonna hit the up button. So this reads 05 or menu option five. Right now I've got mine on user Defined, but that's just because of my other battery that I'm currently using. So anyway, we're gonna go in here and press enter. And we're gonna change this to L1 or LI, press up. All right, that's on L1, we'll hit enter. And then we're gonna change the protocol to L02. So hit enter twice and then press up once, press enter. And that should be good. Now we can hit escape. There you go, now the fault just went away and we are fully connected. And you can see that by the LI right there for lithium. And we should be good to go. Now here, since you're connected to the battery via the ethernet cable, you can go in some of the menu settings and change your high and low cutoffs based on battery percentage. So we'll long press enter. And if you scroll up to 12 and you can change this setting, and this is whenever the battery's on the low side or the low percentage and you're using the grid for a backup, you can have it switch over back to the grid at 40%. I'm just gonna leave it for this video uh, just cause I'm gonna be messing around with this battery. So if we go up to 13, this is the high side. So if you are on grid like overnight or your battery was dead, uh, once the battery is recharged to 80%, the inverter will automatically switch back over to battery and continue powering whatever you're powering. Again, I'm just gonna leave it at 80% for this video. Now, if we go up to option 21, option 21 is the low DC cutoff. So if you want everything to shut off at a specific percentage, you would set that here. 
All right, there you go. That is pretty much it. And if for some reason you find you are having trouble communicating with this, the next step would be is to grab a computer and we're gonna hook up to the RS-232 port and connect it to the computer and make sure the protocol inside the BMS is set correctly. And we're gonna open up the JK48 volt 100 amp BMS software version 2.5-7.0, all right? And the program is called PBMS Tools. So double click that, it'll open up. And then from here, we're gonna hit try connect. There we go, we are connected. And right up here is your inverter protocol. Mine is set on pylon 485 and that's exactly what you need. But uh, the reason this could be off is if they tested the battery connected to some other uh, inverter, you know, it could be set on one of these other ones. So if yours is set on a different one, go ahead and change it to pylon 485 and then you should be good to go. Alrighty, there you go. Wasn't too bad now, was it? Obviously this protocol, et cetera, is for my specific inverter. I guess if you're still having problems, make sure you're using the correct protocol for your specific inverter. If you don't know that, maybe contact the manufacturer and they can send that over to you. One other option would be to contact Jack Appear and ask them, which is exactly what I did. And they gave me the list of protocols that they have actually tested out. And I'm just gonna put this up on the screen for a couple of seconds and hopefully yours is on here. All right, that's pretty much the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, obviously put those down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Like that smash button, and I'll see you on the next. Uh, if there's some problem with your wiring, you know, you could open the manual and go to page 21. It does show if it'll focus you know, all the pinouts and all that kind of stuff that could be helpful. Um, um, um.